Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we are going to be going over the training that we like to do for the K-9 Good Citizens Test. If you want to learn more about the Tom Rose School or if you want to become a professional dog trainer, the information is going to be in the description below. If you want to do a private session with me, whether in person or Zoom, the information for that will be there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let's get started. The K-9 Good Citizen Test is a 10 skill training program that is open to all breeds that focuses on teaching the basics of good manners and obedience. It instills the values of a responsible dog owner and strengthens the bond between you and your dog at home as well as out in the community. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of the things we always want to keep in mind when we're training our dogs is dogs are very situational. If we have a dog and we want that dog to perform a certain way when something happens, then we have to rehearse it. That's one of the main things of training for the CGC. And a lot of you are probably going to become evaluators and you're going to be testing people and working with them to get them to accomplish the exact same thing. Okay, so the very first thing is accepting a friendly stranger. Now, one of the most common mistakes that everybody makes when it comes to training their dogs is what? It's something I've been saying the whole time I've been here. Pairing. Pairing your physical with your verbal. If you're doing any sort of physical cue for your dog, it doesn't matter what it is, make sure something comes before it so it could become a predictable pattern for your dog. So like we were talking about earlier when everybody's giving a little tug and these little cues to their dog, if you add a verbal before it, at least now the dog's going to respond on a verbal and not the actual leash. The leash is a tool to teach what it is we want the dogs to understand and perform. So for this exercise, we're going to be coming up to you guys, shaking your hand, and we want the dog to stay in a calm, relaxed state. The thing that's going to get you to fail the CGC is if your dog is acting fearful, if your dog is acting aggressive, or if you're having to put a significant amount of force on your dog to get them to perform a behavior. But since we're training, if you need to apply any sort of correction, you can go ahead and do that. But again, make sure your marker comes before the correction or whatever it is that you're doing. So be very aware of that. So we're both gonna walk up and we're gonna come shake everybody's hands. Focus on your dog right now. Don't focus on us. Focus on your dog, because if your dog makes a mistake, I want you guys to be able to fix it. What's up, man? So we're just gonna come up and shake everybody's hands and we're talking the same way we would as if you were on the street meeting somebody else. What's up, man? What's up? How's it going? The moment your dog yeah, makes a mistake, dog. if your dog does make a mistake, make sure you say whatever your marker is or whatever the command you want them to be in and then follow it up with the physical cue, okay? So we're gonna do it again. How you doing? You doing well? Everything's good. We're having a good time. Coming back through. What's up, buddy? Cool, cool. What's happening? Make sure you're watching your you gotta, dog. If you they make a mistake dog. during okay. testing, awesome. they're gonna want you to look at the person who's coming up and greeting you. But right now, since we're training, the number one focus has to be on the dogs. We're gonna come back through and do it one more time. How's it going? Make sure you're watching your dog. Very nice. Excellent. You have a cute dog there. Thank you. How long have you had your dog? Oh, too long. That's such a sweet little puppy. People will do that stuff, right? Let's go down the entire line. And another big thing about training dogs up, is the concept so, of desensitization. I really like so dog. what is dog that? Is it? Is, uh, Anybody know? Desensitization Exposure. What kind of dog is right? it? Awesome. As cool. much as we can expose them to something, we're gonna do that. Because right now, if your dog never gets used to somebody coming up and shaking your hand while they're in Hello. the heel position, then the first Hello. time it happens, Great. what are they gonna Rocky. do? They're gonna um, to wanna to break the position because kind of they're not that? used to it. That's a very, very simple exercise. Just because you're doing it here inside of the training building doesn't mean that if you take your dog outside and do the exact same thing that it's gonna work. We have to make sure we get our dogs generalized to the training. But yeah, so they know like, okay, if I'm doing the obedience inside, it doesn't just apply here. It also applies outside. It applies if I'm at the store. It doesn't matter where I am, the dog understands that they have to follow through. So very first exercise, very simple. Any questions? All right, easy enough. Okay, so now Rocky is gonna go over the second step of the CGC. All righty guys, so the second test in the CGC is sitting politely for petting, okay? So what I'm gonna do is walk over, ask you if I can pet your dog, and then what I'm gonna do is run my hand across the head and the back end. So for those of you who are struggling with this concept, right, what you can do is have whoever is going to come pet your dog, hold their hand out with a treat like this, right? And then have them run their hand over and then pet while they're feeding, okay? So, quick example of that would be, hello. How's it going? Can I pet your dog real quick? Of course. Awesome. So just like that, right? Awesome. So does anybody have a dog that is a little bit uncomfortable or unsure about new people petting? So we have one over there. So Rocky's gonna come up and do the same thing with her. Hello. Hello. Can I pet your dog? Of course. Awesome. Check. 
Should I correct that? No, so right now we, we wouldn't want you to correct right now, mainly because of the fact we wouldn't want to create fear with this situation. Okay. So if we were to correct her while he's petting and working with her on this, then it could make her afraid of somebody coming and petting, which would have the exact opposite effect of what we're trying to do. Okay. So we want to make her comfortable. So a lot of times when we're training our dogs, we break everything down into the smallest pieces possible, and then we put them together for the final picture. Good job. So I'm going to see if I can do the same thing with her. Is that okay? Can I get a treat? Yep. And I know she, like she knows you a little bit better than she knows me. So let's see how she does with me. So I'm also going to try to get down on her level to reduce the amount of stress possible. So I'm going to come down, feed her. Good girl. So she's now more oh, focused on my hand. Sorry, there we go. Down? Very nice. Okay. And again, I'm just trying to create a very strong positive association for her oh being pet by somebody new because she's eating a treat. She's enjoying herself. This is a nice, pleasant experience. And that's what we want. And when you are testing, the dog is allowed to move their head in order to receive the pet, but they're not allowed to move forward and jump up on the person and try to gain affection or attention from them. But since we're coming down at her level and we're giving her the food and then we're petting her, she's learning like, oh, just relax. I get a nice little treat. This is a nice, pleasant experience. And this is the first step, right? Of course, when you're testing, you're not gonna be able to do that. So we wanna get the dog more and more comfortable with people coming up and petting her. So you're gonna want a lot of different people to do this so then she can become generalized. And then you're gonna wanna have them do the same thing without the treat. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process to get to the point where she's really comfortable. Because again, if your dog is showing signs of fearfulness or aggression, that's gonna be a fail. So you really have to work through that. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so everybody else, if your dog is good and comfortable, your main focus is to make sure your dog doesn't break. Okay, and we're gonna come up and add distractions. If your dog does break the position, calmly say your marker, calmly adjust your dog back into the correct position, Good dog, and we'll try it again. So this is something you're gonna to wanna to work on. Of course, using the food is just a tool to get your dogs to where they need to be. Again, any tool that we use should be a means to an end. The leash is there to help us train the dog. The training collars are there to help us train the dog, the food, etc. So just like everything, we have to build the dogs up, up until the point where they're successful and you're able to have people come pet your dog and they're not even worried about it. Another interesting exercise that you can do with this is keep the dog's focus on you, which a lot of you have been doing. And then as the person comes in to pet, if the dog looks away, the reward stops, the dog looks back, you reward again. So we really get them looking. So I'll demonstrate with you right now because your dog's looking at you really nicely. So keep your dog looking. I'm gonna come up to the side. Once he looks back, mark and reward. And then I'm gonna bring my hand down when he looks at you again, mark and reward. And I'm going to bring my hand a little closer. Let's not have him smell it. Put him back. There we go. If he tries to smell, keep him looking at you. Excellent. Very nice. And then I'm going to pet again. Oh. Good. Good. That was good. good. Your marker was timed nicely. And it's the head pet that mm -hmm. always makes it difficult. There we go. Good. So that's good. Excellent. All right. So easy enough. Awesome. Are we ready for step three? Yes, we are. Any questions on the sit for petting? So we know how to work on it. We want to have, like you guys can set this up where one of you sit with your dog and everybody rotates through and then you rotate each person so your dog gets really used to people coming up and petting and it's not seen as a big deal for them anymore. And again, for testing, your dog has to sit nicely, not jump forward, not try to demand affection and not show any signs of aggression or fear. So we're gonna come down with the brush, just like what we did with the petting. The main thing, if you need to fix your dog, go in and fix them. They're allowed to move, they're allowed to stand, they're allowed to sit. So this is a pretty easy exercise as long as you don't have a fearful or aggressive dog. Keep going. It's two to move away. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start I off with brushing. I don't want her to feel okay. like she's stuck. Right. So I will go ahead and reward her since she's very interested in me right now, okay? Good. Or he's very interested in me. Good. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check the ears. Okay. So you want me to continue feeding all day? I would, I would. Caesar, good. So a lot of that. Yeah. Good Thank job. You. Any questions on this exercise? It's very simple. It's just like the first two. We're just adding a couple more things. If your dog is again, a little bit cautious like yours, we're gonna wanna have everybody petting her, working with her, and just getting her comfortable with people approaching her. And make sure anytime somebody is helping you with this, that they're moving very, very slow. So speed, if you're moving very quick with a dog that is cautious or fearful, it's not good. It's gonna make them more fearful. So we wanna move very, very slowly with dogs that are cautious. 
Okay, any questions on that exercise? Again, the key things, the key takeaway is if you need to, if you're going to adjust your dog, remember with this exercise, the dog's allowed to stand up, sit down, lay down. They're allowed to move around in that position and you're allowed to talk to them as much as you like. So during training, if you have to use a marker, again, make sure you follow through with which, whatever the marker predicts. Because again, in order for a marker to be a marker, it has to predict what? One of the four quadrants of opera conditioning. So positive or negative punishment, positive or negative reinforcement. Okay, cool. All right, guys, so the next test that we're gonna go over is called out for a walk. Um, this test just demonstrates that you guys have control over your dog when walking out in public, okay? So the way that's gonna look is you're gonna start off by walking, right? Doing a left turn, right? Halt, continue walking again, make a right turn, do an about turn, and then halt. Simple enough. If you prefer to be walked through it, the evaluator can walk you through as well. Either option is fine. So if you want to be walked through, we can walk you through. Also, the dog can be on your left or right side. Your dog does not have to sit when you halt, but if you want to work on getting your dog to do the automatic sit, feel free to do that. And you can talk to your dog as much as you like. But since all you guys are training for advanced competition obedience, I would recommend treating this the same way as if you're training for the you know, well, AKC dogs. novice yeah. or IGP. But keep in mind when you become evaluators, your clients don't have to. So what I used to tell my clients is I would tell them, you could even do this the entire time. Like you don't even have to walk straight. So keep this in mind when you have your own clients. I would tell them you could walk and talk to your dog like this. So imagine the same path that Rocky just went over. Come on, buddy, good boy, nice job. Oh, that's a good boy, you're so good. Look at you go, oh, that's such a good dog. Look at you, amazing, good puppy. Come on, like it doesn't matter. You can do all that and still pass. <laughs> so that's something, again, keep in mind when you guys become evaluators and you're working with your clients or people who are testing for the canine good citizen test. But for you guys, let's work on a little bit of that precision as well. So we'll start at the end and we'll work our way down. Any questions? Does now, any, oh, sorry, go ahead. Did you have any does, uh, notes you want to mention as far as the loose leash walking points that you've been seeing? Um, so if, you, if your leash does get tight, just do a little tension getter, okay? Is that okay for the video? Yeah, absolutely, right. yeah. Right. Okay. Since we are training, if you need to make an adjustment, make an adjustment. Just make sure if you're going to make an adjustment that you say the word that predicts the adjustment. Because again, if you're not using the word, then you always need to use the leash or you always need to use whatever it is that you're using because you don't have a verbal word that predicts it. Make sense? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna start with you and we're gonna work our way down. The rest of you could be working on a good sit stay or down stay, whatever it is that you wanna work on. Forward. Okay. Left turn. About turn. Right turn. Halt. Exercise finished. Next. Make sure you guys are working on whatever it is you need to work on while you're doing your heel. You know your dogs better than I do. Also something else, this is another thing that's worth keeping in mind. It's something I like to do with my own dogs. So for my dogs, my personal dogs, I have a command that means focused heel. You have to look at me, you have to maintain focus the entire time. I have another command that means heel, but you don't have to look at me, but you do have to maintain this position. And then I have another command that means walk with me. You're allowed to go wherever you want around me as long as you don't make the leash tight. So if I was doing this exercise with my dog and I had those three, I'd probably just use the last one. Again, you're all working on your focus heel and everything, so it's good to be doing that. But in the future, keep that in mind. So same thing with your clients. So all my clients, I teach them two different types of loose leash walking. One where the dog has to maintain a really nice position, and the other one, again, where the dog can walk wherever they want around them as long as they're not pulling on the leash. And that's pretty easy to teach once you teach the dogs the more formal exercise. So what I want you to do is you're gonna come out during this exercise, don't have your dog on a command. So what we wanna do is we wanna expose our dogs to this situation and we want them to know that anytime they see three people just kind of standing, looking weird, you know, cause it's not natural. Like go ahead and stand right here. And we're all just back a little, little bit of distance cause they have to walk through us. But we're standing here and we're just, no one does this. 
the dogs can pick up on that. Now, if we're standing like this and we're having a conversation, that's gonna be something the dog's used to seeing in a normal situation. But a lot of times when you're testing, they'll put people in a group like this and we all just kind of stand. So it's very clear that it's a different picture to the dog. So what I like to do for this exercise when I'm teaching the dog is I have somebody come in. So we're gonna go down the line. You're gonna come in, you're gonna have your dog on just no command, just hanging out with you, walking, and you're gonna allow your dog to check us out. Do not allow your dog to jump on us though. We are going to ignore the dogs completely. We're not gonna have any interaction. We're just gonna stand there. If the dog jumps on us, it's on you to fix your own dog. So what I like to do for this exercise is I just pull the dog off the person. So I'm not applying a correction. I'm not doing anything that's gonna make the dog afraid of people. I'm just pulling them off. Once all four paws are back on the ground, then there's no more tension on the leash. And you're gonna allow your dog to check us out. The idea is the dog has the ability to check us out and then the dog realizes we're boring. We're no fun. When the dog comes back to you, yeah, good puppy. You're gonna do a little bit of work. You're gonna have some fun. And then if your dog wants to check us out again, allow it. Again, the dog's gonna realize we're boring. That's the main idea. Does anyone have any questions before you try this? Is it pretty clear? Okay, so you're gonna come in again. Your dog's not gonna be in a command, but you're gonna have your dog in a pretty much a loose leash walk. If they jump up and you need to adjust it, make sure you do that. And we're gonna do this until your dog is not even interested in us anymore. And when your dog comes back to you, it has to be like, boom, boom, you're the fun one. You're the one that your dog wants to hang out with, not us, we suck. You're the fun one. All right, so whenever you're ready, and we're just gonna stand here and completely ignore what you're doing. And you can train your dog around us. You can give them treats. You can do sits if you want. Whatever your dog enjoys. And since you guys have been doing some really nice training with your dogs, this is, he doesn't even care about us already. All right, perfect. Well, you can head back. That was easy enough. So his dog showed no interest in us at all. And that's actually what we want. So if all your dogs are already doing that, this is gonna be super easy. So whenever you're ready. And depending on the evaluator, they may have the people who are standing here move, you know, like do a little bit of this or something, or they just might have them stand. So each evaluator might be a little bit different, but I always like to start where the people are still, we're not doing anything. And then as the dogs get better at it, so like your dog is totally ready for us to do this stuff and move around. Same with yours, your dog is re doing really nice as well. All right, you can head back. This is going smoother than I thought. Any questions on this one? All right, you ready for the next exercise? Cool. All right, guys, so the next test that we're gonna go over is sits and downs and staying on command, okay? So the way this test is gonna work, you're gonna ask your dog to sit, right? And then after that, you're gonna ask your dog to down. And then after that, you're gonna pick one of the two and you're gonna ask your dog to stay. And then you're gonna walk out to the end of this line and your dog's expected to stay there. And as soon as you walk out to the end of this line, you're gonna return back to your dog. You can either return back to the front of them or the side of them, right? And then afterwards you will release your dog and exercise will be finished, okay? Any questions? If you do need to recommand for any of this stuff, that is a-okay. So everybody go ahead and put your dog into a sit. Go ahead and put your dog into a down. So at this point, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is Everybody should have their own 20 foot long line at this point. Um, you're gonna attach the 20 foot long line, take the six foot long line off, right? And then what I'm gonna ask you to do is walk out to the end of your leash. Once you're at the end of your leash, you can return back to your dogs, either in the front or the side. Is everyone ready? All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead and leave your dog, walk out to your imaginary 20 foot long line. If your dog does break, go back, make the adjustments that are necessary for your dog where they are in training. And when you get to the end, go ahead and return. If so, a big part of training, which I talked to you guys about before is pattern training. So what I want you guys to do right now, get in position, do not release your dog. I want you to walk back out and back again. So a lot of times if your dog thinks, oh, you're going to go out one time and once you're back, you're going to release me, then they're going to anticipate it. 
So we're gonna walk out and we're gonna walk back again. Make sure while you're training, as you're walking away, you have eyes on your dog the entire time. And if you want, you could even walk back and go back. Just show your dog. We always wanna show our dog different pictures. Sometimes I like to get in front of the dogs and start dancing. Maybe, I, maybe I'll squat down and look at the dog. Right, and since we're training, we want to add as much as we can to ensure that we're going to be successful on test day. And again, make sure you have eyes on oh, yeah. while we're testing, because if he breaks and you don't see it, you miss the window, you miss that opportunity. And whenever you guys are ready, whenever you want to, you can go back and release your dog and the exercise will be finished. But it's up to you. I want you guys to work whatever you feel like working right now. Okay, the next exercise is a come one called. This one's very simple. I'm sure you guys have been working on your recalls. So if you haven't been working on your recalls, you know what, you all have. This is going to be those at home. When we start off, remember when we start the recalls, we start really close and we build our dogs up and we gradually add more distance. Whether you're using luring or you're using the leash as a cue to help or you're using attention getters, we all know the steps that we need to take in order to get the come when called. Now, if you want to use a formal command, remember we have formal commands and we have informal commands. What's the difference between the two? Any ideas? All right, so a formal command, your dog has to do it. So if you stand in front of your dog and you give them a formal come or whatever you use that you're going to be testing for novice and IGP and these different obedience routines, that's formal. So if you give your dog a formal command, they have to do it. Either they have to do it or you have to make sure they do it. If you give them an informal command, if they don't do it, it's not a big deal because it's informal. This is like what I tell my clients all the time. Like if you're inside your house and you want your dog to come to you, but you don't want to reinforce something in case they don't, don't do it, then you use informal. So for me, I use it all the time. I tell my dogs, I'm like, come on guys, let's go, let's go. Good puppies, come on. That's informal. Because if they don't come to that, it's not like I'm standing in front of them going, come. Because if they choose to ignore that, now I have to go, no. And now I have to reinforce it. So if your dog has a very good informal come when called, you can do that on this exercise. You could walk to the end and you can get there and you can be like, yeah, puppy, 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 and praise your dog till they come to you. That's acceptable. So it's whatever you want to work on. If you want to work on the more formal, work on it. But if your dog chooses not to come to you, make sure you're ready to reinforce the expectations. So you're going to walk out 10 feet. Uh, we'll just say, I mean, 10 feet is about right here, right? It's pretty short, yeah. short distance. So you're going to walk out approximately 10 feet, turn and face your dog, call your dogs to you whenever you're ready. And you can say stay or wait, or you can say nothing at all. I prefer not to say anything. Good. Caesar. Good. Good. Yes. Good Beautiful. Yes. All right, guys. So the next test that we're going to do is reaction to another dog. So what we're going to do is have one handler on this side, one handler on that side, about 20 feet apart. Um, you guys are going to meet in the middle. Your dog shouldn't show any other type of reaction other than mild interest in the other dog, right? Gonna walk over, say, hey, how's it going, right? Like you're meeting somebody in the neighborhood and then keep it pushing, okay? And your dogs are not allowed to show like overexcitement, any fear, aggression, or anything like that, okay? Just mild interest is all that they can do. All right, let's begin. So ideally, guys, I would line up. Your dogs are primarily on the left side, most of you guys, right? I would line up with your dog on the left, shake hands on the right, right? Talk to each other on the right, okay? All right, go ahead and, and give it during, a shot. What? And during this exercise, focus on your dog. All right, we'll demonstrate. Okay. We're both, we have our dogs. We start to approach. I'm working my dog still, so I'm watching them, right? Hey, how are you? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm are you having awesome. good? Yeah, man. Beautiful. Have a nice day. You too. See you later. And then we walk by. Good job. <laughs> so you're going to say hi, hello, good day, goodbye, and then you're going to walk off. So we'll do two quick handshakes. All right, guys, is everybody ready? Yes. Go ahead and begin. So what you guys can do since that is going on, I would just go ahead and reward, right? Yes. Carry on with your conversation and then try it again, okay? So go ahead and uh, shake hands real quick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice seeing you, shake hands again and keep it pushing. Oh, she, yeah, she's gonna readjust and fix it, okay? All right. Yeah. To further advance this, um, since we have multiple dogs, I'm gonna line three of you up down here, three of you up down there, and we're gonna go across and do the same thing multiple times. So one will stop, hey, what's up? Then you'll go to the next person, hey, what's up, right? And keep going, okay? So handlers should be next to each other, dogs should be on the outside, and go ahead and begin, okay? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, how about you? Great. Now go to the next person. 
Go ahead, Gabby. Ask her to sit, Gabby. Go ahead and say what's up. How's the weather? Hello, how are you? Exercise finished. Anytime we're doing training, we always want to make it as easy as possible and then make it more difficult as the dog gets better. So a couple of dogs, I don't, I'm going to rephrase that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from far away and I'm going to do a drop, but I'm not going to drop it all the way. I'm just going to start and I'm going to drop it low. What I want you guys to do is just keep rewarding your dogs when they look at you, praise them, let them know they're doing a good job. And I don't want you as the humans to do any sort of recognition of the chair. A lot of times our dogs will follow our lead. They'll feed off of our energy. So let's say a chair does fall over and you go, oh, what's that? Well, then your dog's going to go, oh, what's that? Right? And that's not what we want. So you're just going to have your dog look at you and just keep rewarding your dogs. So I'm going to start with a very low drop. Now we're going to bring it all the way up. And hopefully I don't damage the chair, but now I'm going to drop it even higher. Everyone's doing really nice. Okay, so now since they did well with that, now I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. And I'm going to start, same thing, I'm going to make it quiet. And again, as long as your dogs are doing great, if they look at you and you want to reward them, go ahead and do that. We're going to make it a little bit louder. And we're going to do the last one. And everyone did great. Now, I basically took the chair back as far as I could. If you have more distance, you can even make it a little bit farther. And then over time, you bring it closer and closer. Some dogs, if you start right away and just drop it right next to them, a dog that's more skittish, you can cause more problems because then you're now trying to fix something that you just created an issue with. So we always want to start farther away. And as the dog gets better, we bring it closer and closer. So a good example of this outside of like a canine good citizen is if you're doing, uh, for example, let's say you're doing some training with a police department and you have to get the dog comfortable with the sound of gunfire. Well, we don't want to take a dog and fire a weapon right next to him day one. We can make him afraid of it. We start it very far away. We pair it up while playing tug with the dog. We create a positive association. And over time, we bring it closer and closer to where it's not even a big deal for the dog. Or in fact, the dog hears a sound and goes, oh, awesome, I'm gonna get a treat or I'm gonna get a toy. Does that make sense? Same thing when we do something with a jogger. So we got a jogger who's gonna help us out. And what he's gonna do, you ready to do a lot of running? He's gonna start far away and you're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did with the chair. If your dog's looking at you, you're gonna reward them, encourage that um, engagement from your dog and he's gonna start and he's basically gonna do a zigzag and he's gonna get closer and closer until he runs right by your dogs. And the whole time you're keeping your dogs focused and you're rewarding them for doing what you want them to be doing. So whenever you're ready, get a nice good exercise. And then you're gonna do a little turn, come back. And again, as long as your dogs, if they look at you, go ahead and reward them. And you're even going to run behind them too. Yeah, so you're just going to keep going back and forth and then you're going to do one lap behind them. Approximately four feet behind them. See, you wanted to do some running. I got you covered. And then go behind them. Good. All right, that's good. Thank you. Did any of the dogs struggle with that? You struggled a little bit? All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Instead of trying to avoid it, what I want you to do is just kind of run by them again, but I want you to start at a slow, actually, I'll do it. I'm going to go at a slow pace. So same thing, and then I'm going to have you do the same thing. So now since that dog was a little hesitant, I'm going to run by, but I'm going to do it slower. So we can decrease the speed if we need. Make them comfortable with it, keep rewarding. All right, I'm gonna do a wide one behind them. I'm gonna come right through here. So if your dog was having any issues, then you wanna work on that outside of this exercise. So if your dog was a little bit hesitant with the chair or they seemed a little nervous or afraid, do it, but make sure you start again 
at a slower level of a stimuli and as the dog gets better you can increase the stimuli and same thing with your dog if he's nervous or uncomfortable with people jogging by have people do it but have them start far away slow pace or gradually get closer and closer as your dog gets more comfortable with it but again if your dog is a little nervous or afraid of something do not use a correction to try to fix it because the correction will make it worse if a dog is afraid so if i'm a dog and i go ah that's scary and then i get a correction now that just solidifies the fear and now it's going to be worse so i'll give you a good example i saw a video of this on youtube and i felt bad for the dogs all the dogs were in a downstay and the trainer comes out and throws fireworks in the center of all the dogs the fireworks start going off all the dogs are breaking the downstay and everybody is yanking their dogs back with the prong collar correcting them well in that situation the dogs go oh my gosh fireworks they try to escape the fireworks correction fireworks corrections fireworks now that just made the fireworks 10 times worse so remember if you do have an issue with a dog performing something based on fear you want to use the concept of counter conditioning and desensitization counter conditioning is we take something that the dog may think predicts something bad and we make it predict something nice and then desensitization is we gradually increase the stimuli we start at a stimuli so low that it doesn't negatively impact the dog and then we increase that stimuli as the dog becomes more and more confident okay guys so for this exercise we're going to be doing supervised separation um, what that what that will entail is your dog will be either in a sit or down doesn't really matter right um, but your dog will have to stay for three minutes while you are not in the building okay so um, what will happen is a handler, either me or whoever else will be helping me, will walk over and say, hey, may I hold on to your dog? Um, you're going to leave the building and your dog is expected to sit there nicely without excessively panting, showing any signs of nervousness or anything like that. Okay. Any questions? All right, let's begin. Now, I want to add one thing, if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Now, since we have these windows, if you want to go ahead and peek through, you have a couple options. One, if you trust the person that's handling your dog, you can ask them, hey, if my dog breaks the stay that I leave them in, if you want to leave your dog in a stay, that they can reinforce it. If you don't want to do that and you would prefer to reinforce it yourself, which is not a bad option because then the dog's going to go, it doesn't matter where you are. You may reinforce something if I'm not doing it correctly. So you can go outside, peek through the window since we're training, and if you see your dog break the stay, you come right on in, nope. Walk to your dog, reinforce it, hand the leash back off and leave again. So again, because we're training, so we want to show the dogs these different pictures. Does that make sense? So pick whichever option you decide to do and let the person who's handling your dog know which option you're going to be doing. So you, I guess, can go with Ben, right? I'll go with you, Tom. Pick whoever you want. You can pick somebody as well. And all right, cool. So we're going to come in and grab the leash. Did you want me to reinforce the downstay or did you want to come in if he's... Okay, excellent. Right now we have the students outside for three minutes. It's a supervised separation. During testing, we're not allowed to correct or tell the dog what to do, but we can talk to the dog. We can praise them. So if I was sitting here, I could say, good job, good boy, way to go, excellent. What the students did was they each placed their dog into a downstay. Even though that's not required, we find that people tend to be more successful with their exercise when they tell the dog exactly what they want them to do. So instead of letting the dogs decide, they tell the dog, okay, you're gonna be in a downstay. So now the dogs know, okay, I'm gonna sit here in this downstay, easy. Once they come back in, we hand the leash back off, exercise finished. All right, so let's go ahead and call them back in. And that when they come back, then they can release them, right? Yes. Okay. Exercise is finished once they come back. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And make sure when you are training for this, take your time, make it as fun as possible. And as always, remember, dog training should be fun. I'll see you guys in the next one.